So in this lesson, we're going to look at the surface area of prisms, and specifically, we're going to look at applying the formulas for area polygons to look at rectangular and triangular prisms. So there's basically two methods that you can use for uh, finding the area of a prism. You can, both methods involve finding the sum of the areas of each face. You can either draw the net, and when you draw the net, you're just breaking down the, the basically the polygons into rectangles and triangles, um, and then finding the sum of all of those different polygons. Or you can kind of just use your spatial sense and basically do the same thing without having to go through the net process and just kind of organizing your thinking and then finding the sum. So here we have a rectangular prism and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna find the area. So for the rectangular prism, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the met that second method, which is just organize without using the net, how we can just go ahead and organize our... So when you actually are seeing this rectangular prism, um, we actually are seeing three of the six faces. And the three different rectangles that we see are actually the three different shapes that we have. So there's two of rectangle one, two of rectangle two, and two of rectangle three. So if we can find out the areas of these three rectangles, then we just double their size and we have all six. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna do the area of rectangle one first. And so what are the dimensions of rectangle one? Well, rectangle one is eight by four and five by eight. So I know that for all of these, since they're all rectangles, I need base times height. So that's my formula. So I'm gonna do 8 and 4 tenths by 5.8 and I'm going to multiply this by 2 because there's two of them. Then I'm going to do rectangle 2. Okay, to do rectangle 2 I need its base is 2 and 1 tenth and its height is five and eight tenths. And there's two of them. So to do rectangle three, I need its base, which would be five and eight, or eight and four tenths. And you can't really see that, so let's try again. It's a little yellow. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, and then it's Height would be two and one tenth. So the area of rectangle three is eight and four tenths by two and one tenth. And there's two of them. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I've substituted and now I'm ready to evaluate. So I get 97 and 44 hundredths for the first two rectangles, 24 and 36 hundredths for the second set of rectangles, and 35 and 28 hundredths for the third set. So my last thing is to find the sum. So now I'm gonna find all of them. So I'm gonna use the abbreviation SA for surface area, and now I'm gonna add. So I get 157.08 or 8 hundredths and my units because it's centimeters would be centimeters squared. So when I get the sum I get 157 and 8 hundredths and my units because it's surface area would be centimeters squared. So 
So next, we're going to go ahead and determine the surface area of a triangular prism. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw the net. So the advantage in drawing a net is that you can see all the different parts and you can label it. The disadvantage sometimes is that sometimes people mislabel everything. So you have to imagine that there's a bottom part of this triangular prism. So there's this little bottom here. And remember that there's a triangle in the back. And there's another rectangle there on the left side. So there's three rectangles and two triangular faces. So when we go ahead and we draw the net, don't worry too much about how beautiful your net is. Just worry about that. It has all the parts. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so then the next thing is you want to label. And so I know that, so this triangle here in the front, I want to go ahead and I'm going to put it over here. So I know that this has to be 15 meters and its height has to be 12 meters. Okay, now the rectangle that it's attached to is this bottom one and it's 20 meters long. So I know that this part here is 20 meters. And so I know that all of these are 20 meters because they're all rectangles. Okay, so now here's kind of the weird part. So this rectangle here is the one that's attached to the middle one. Um, and it's kind of like the one that kind of flops down on the side. So that means this part right here is 14 and 2 tenths meters. And it looks like an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and it's safe to assume that this is 14.2 meters also. And we know that because this is a prism, this triangle in the front has to be equal to the one in the back. And this is 15, so that means this height here has to also be 12 meters. Okay, so now we have everything. Okay, so we know that this rectangle and this rectangle are exactly the same. This one is different. And we know that this triangle and this triangle are the same. So we have three different shapes. Two of them are have at least one match. Though. Okay, so we have two of rectangle one. So we have rectangle number one, and we have two of them. And so we know for rectangle number one, we have to do base times height and it's 20 by 14.2. We need a little bit more room there, huh? Okay, and we know we have one of rectangle number two, and it's base times height, and it's 20 by 15. Let's put times one just to emphasize that. Okay, and we have two of the triangles. I'm going to just put triangle and I'm going to put three because it's our third figure in there. Okay, and it's base times height divided by two. Okay, and the base of our triangle is 15. The height of our triangle is 12. divided by two, and there's two of them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our math. I'm gonna go ahead and put parentheses there. Okay, so for our two rectangles, we get 568.
for that second rectangle that's the bottom of our prism we get 300. For our two triangles, remember what happens to these twos is they end up canceling. And 15 times 12 gives us 180. So, last step is to go ahead and find the sum. So, our surface area is 1,048 square meters.